The torches dim in the Aeolus' eyes, for once again we meet to regale the tales of heroes, the myths and legends of your favorite D&D campaigns. This is the Tales Around the Tavern's Table podcast. The sound of steel clashing is off in the distance, and our heroes are on the brink of destruction as they fight an undead army. They're on the hunt for artifacts to destroy the villain who has tricked them into helping him. Today, for my very first episode, I plan on telling you guys the three best D&D stories of my life. The first one's going to be the story about how the druid's wild shape literally bites the party in the butt. The second one, it's not so much its own story as it is just the consequences of what happened. And the third one, (laughs) the third one, the story is so ridiculous. It's called Plan Tiny Electric Badger. So this campaign was a couple years back. The main concept is that zombies are overruling the world and there are like seven artifacts around the world that control and empower these zombies. Well, there's this cookie cutter villain who in search of world dominance who hires the party to help him find the first and most important artifact for controlling these zombies, right? The others kind of just give him special abilities, So eventually you're fighting stuff that's like a Minotaur barbarian that's also a zombie. And I thought it was a really cool concept for a campaign. Well, this guy is basically like, I want world dominance. And the party's like, no, we're going to stop him. We like our freedom for some reason. And he's just kind of like this basic ah, kind of guy. And he's decided to hunt down the party because they know his plan, right? Well... In search of one of these artifacts, the party stumbles upon a world that is solely inhabited by dragons. And the dragons are obviously under mind control, wearing the helmets the whole nine yards. The party is no longer allowed in town because they failed their stealth check one too many times trying to get into the town center. And now there's this huge bounty on the party's head. In this campaign, the oh-so-wise dungeon master in his many years and wisdom of dungeon mastering has allowed me this wild monk who takes lawful and plays it very liberally to cross-class into sorcerer. This causes me to spontaneously cast spells until I can learn to control my magic. Well, the DM thought this would be great. I thought it was a fun character concept because this monk hated spellcasters. So the whole backstory was that her god was forcing her into it. Well, the party's hiding into the middle of this forest when suddenly this monk lights a daylight spell, effectively sending a signal flare for all the dragons in town to know their location. In a panic, the party ends up getting separated. The mage and druid go one way, the monks go the other way, and I think they get captured or something. It's not really important. They're not in the rest of the story. Well, lucky for the mage and druid, or, well, maybe not so, they get found by this mind-controlled bronze dragon. The mage casts Fog Cloud, and the dragon randomly starts shooting lightning bolts in all directions. The mage gets hit. The druid uses cover to shape into a wolf. They hide in the cover of the trees, but as soon as the fog cloud dissipates, the dragon easily finds them. The druid suddenly remembers with a roll that bronze dragons have quite the soft spot for animals, so he decides to act like a starving wolf. Me so hungry, the druid said. I'm sorry, my dear wolf friend, but I have to take this man. No, I eat. The druid rolled for persuasion and did not roll well. Uh, Okay, the bronze dragon said skeptically. Let, Let me at least kill him for you. No! Desperate, the druid takes a bite out of the mage's leg, knocking him to zero hit points and knocking him unconscious. Me hungry now! Finally, the dragon leaves the druid to his meal, but not before stripping the mage of everything since the wolf, quote, didn't need the extra to cut through. 
the druid immediately healed the mage and both survived, though their pride was a little wounded. Now, can we just talk about the voice I made for that druid? No! It's like Russian, Spanish. I don't... I, it was a weird accent. I'm sorry. I was just feeling it in the moment. All right, guys. It's time for our second quote-unquote story. Well, I say it like that because really this is just a continuation of the previous story. Um, as you guys surely remember, if you don't, I truly i am concerned about your short-term memory loss. The mage lost everything in that fight with the bronze dragon. This included his armor, this included his spell book. Well, the monks ended up making their way into town somehow. I think they used disguises. And they see the mage's spellbook up for sale. So being the good, lawful citizens of the world they are, they buy that and a second journal. Um, they didn't like this mage because a little bit of backstory, the mage was absolutely racist against dragons. And according to lore, all sorcerers have dragon blood in their lineage. Well, the same monk that was cross-classed into sorcerer was a call of Bahamut, which means, well, she looks basically like a half-dragon, and she would do anything for her god. That means if Bahamut says, you need to drop dead right now, she would drop dead right now. Well, they skillfully took the mage's spellbook and the new journal and swapped to the bindings. And in that new journal, they wrote absolute gibberish in Draconic. This was the only ma language the mage didn't speak because of his racism. For so many sessions, the mage was trying to figure out why he couldn't use the book. In hindsight, this definitely shouldn't have been allowed. This is not lawful behavior, but it is such a great story and I'm so glad the DM let me do this. <laughs> well, this mage cast every spell he could think of to read the book and because his book wasn't magic or his spell book, he couldn't read it. This went on for sessions. I want to say this went on for like five sessions. Finally, he found some dragons to decipher his book and the look on his face when the, dr when the DM told him it says Wingardium Leviosa in Draconic was so priceless. I think the guy was actually mad about it too, but I was laughing so hard I did not care. All right, guys, it is time for our finale. Plan Tiny Electric Badger. I'm sure you guys aren't going to think the story is as great as I do, but it is still a meme amongst our D&D group. So at this point, the party has learned that electricity ha disables these helmets and pretty much deduced that the restricted part of town was where the control center was for all the helmets. Now, we had made this plan, absolutely foolproof plan, for the druid to wild shape into a mouse and he was going to sneak into the control center and use lightning bolts to disable all the helmets at once. Well, I'm sure you notice that the plan is titled Plan Tiny Electric Badger, not Plan Tiny Electric Mouse. He wasn't high enough level to shift into tiny creatures, which a mouse is classified as a tiny creature. So he decided he was going to go in as a badger instead. He was going to go in as a badger, but make himself tiny by casting reduced size on himself. I don't understand why we thought that it would make more sense for a tiny badger to go in instead of a regular sized badger. Like going in as a badger, he's in enough of a disguise that nobody's gonna know it's this druid. It doesn't make any sense, but it's apparently what we thought made sense. We thought this plan was absolutely brilliant since just a few sessions ago, we learned that Bronze dragons have a soft spot for animals. He was gonna 
come up with this whole sob story about how he was the runt of the litter and he was going to basically break this dragon's heart if he got caught. That way he didn't just instantly get incinerated. Well, about halfway through this plan, he realized that he didn't know how to act like a badger. And so he decided he was going to cast summon monster to summon a bunch of badgers and study them oh my gosh it was interesting to say the least watching the dungeon master try to figure out how badgers act he was all like hey baby how you doing you wanna you wanna do some badgery things off in the woods you ugly at the call of bahamu apparently badgers think that uh dragons are ugly i don't know Going forward, very, very confidently, the druid wild shapes and cast reduced size on himself. But sneaking into the control center, he gets caught by this gold dragon who makes him dig up gems. He didn't make the druid do anything else, so he totally could have just gone on with the plan. But I think he was just so flustered at this point, he... Try, just returned to camp. He could have like gone through with the plan. Nothing else would have happened. The dungeon master even pointed it out. He was like, the dragon didn't hurt you or anything. He just made you dig up like two or three gems and then sent you on your way. What are you guys doing? This was a dumb plan to begin with. I don't understand why this was such a great plan in our heads, but I still think it's hilarious. All right, guys. I'm done torturing you. Thank you so much for listening. I'm going to continue to post on this podcast. I'm not really sure how long, probably until I run out of D&D stories or until I realize nobody really wants to listen to them. But if you guys have any great D&D stories, please email them to me at aroundthetavernstablepod at gmail.com and check out our store on the crafting tabletop at etsy.com and... I might be adding a planned tiny electric badger t-shirt to that shop soon. All right. Thanks again.